This is the 1947 Tucker 48 prototype, the Tin Goose. This car matters because it was the only Tucker on the planet at that time, and nothing else was even being built at that time. This car was the car that had to sell this whole corporation, had to sell the whole world. I, I call this the prototype, pretty much. Um, this is the first real prototype that there was, and it's the car he showed the world, and the car that got the whole world excited. But, uh, where the where the co country was at the time, they were they were hungry for a car, and this thing was probably th this Tucker was um, a compilation of, of all those dreams and all those wishes, and um, though all the cars are important that came after, and if you ask a Tucker owner, his car is the most important car. Sorry, this one is. I don't know if it was just because the country was so hungry for something exciting and, and, and uh, get on with America that uh, everywhere this car went, you know, it went, it went to Madison Square Garden, it went to you know, Washington D.C., and, and there was just crowds, hundreds and thousands of people. Well, the Tucker Corporation formed really fast. In December of 1946, uh, actually 1945, he formed a group of people to build this car. Um, Harry Miller had died by then. Uh, Society, Edsel Ford was dead, Henry Ford was dead, and um, there was this group of people in, in Detroit, and he was pretty well known. He had been known as probably the best salesman in the United States. This thing just sort of, you know, just you know, avalanched on itself, and pretty soon, here he has the biggest plant in the world at that time. He can build anything there, and he's got um, money coming in because he's done these, he, in Chicago, where he, where he was building the car, he was really good at getting money people. And he'd, he'd throw these lavish parties. He'd get, you know, he'd get a certain amount of money, and he'd take that money and throw a party to get five times that amount of money, and, and just just keep doing it. Early in 1947, there the company's up and running, and people are in, you know, in in Chicago, and he's hiring. He's got a lot of people running around the plant. He's bought air-cooled motors. Um, things are looking really bright. And fenders and tires and pieces are coming in the door. So they're going great guns trying to get this car built and make they're actually building cars which is in itself to me just amazing that they're getting bodies stamped out they're getting parts from all over the country um, because they had air-cooled motors by then they had a good supply of steel from air-cooled motors which is really hard to get back then and these cars were getting built and if you look at any of the Tucker cars now they're all a little different but there was a progression there and they, they were if you think of the fact that there's 47 out of 51 still left they were pretty amazing cars once the government came in and started seizing records and uh, just sort of stifling them, they're, they can't do anything. So from about July of 1948 on, um, it was pretty clear that this company wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna happen. For Tucker spotters, if uh, this is the only Tucker that has, doesn't have suicide doors. It has some of his pure ideas. Um, the, the, the wheels are all magnesium wheels. Um, that were 13 inch wheels back then uh, that was part of the suspension. Uh, he had Firestone make special cut tires for this car. Uh, this car also originally had the 589 motor um, which was <clears throat> the original motor that he and Harry Miller had talked about way back into the war. Have the front and rear seats are interchangeable, the, you know, the, the padded dash, the crash compartment, the, uh, the, of course the headlight which is the most famous thing. And but, if you, uh, uh, this, this car just uh, Nothing will ever match it for the, the details of it. If you look it over, if you're a Tucker nut and you look over this car, you can spend hours just to, you see little subtle differences, but you see that the, um, and for us, us that know the story, it's, uh, it's just the fact that it was the first car that all those people saw. That it's, it's the American dream. It's people that uh, anything can happen. And uh, even though he failed, in my opinion, he won in the end because that's who everybody, you know, no, one's, no one thinks of Henry Ford this way. No one thinks of, of uh, Walter P. Chrysler this way. Preston Tucker is a you know, Horatio Alger story that everybody would like to do in their life at least once. And I think that's the legacy of the whole Tucker story. And uh, this car is, represents that legacy better than any other car. I'm John Tucker, grandson of Preston Tucker, and this car matters.